Hello fellow plot questions, today we got the last Guantista, and why I couldn't finish this goddamn stupid book. Well, let's get right into it. So, the last Guantista is this really, Quintista, whatever, it's this really, actually, really awesome book. It's got the Newbery Medal for this year, it's got the Pure Bell Pure Medal, it's got Time's Best Book of the Year, and it's, it's, it's a really good book. It's a good book that I really don't want to read, or what I don't like. Now, the thing is, it's, it's basically about this, this kid, this Mexican kid, who, who's a storyteller, and basically she's being sent to space because a comet is about to hit the planet, and it's probably, I'm guessing, the rest of the book is going to be about her trying to recover Earth's myths and customs and cultures, and her being the carrier of that, which I think is pretty awesome. It's just, um, I don't like any of it. Now, there are two types of books that I usually that I, I usually see, right? One is extremely high concept, like the concept is just stunning, and the entire thing is based on that concept. And then maybe, and then the second type is the author develops a style or a proper way of pacing the story, which is compelling, so that even without the concept, the story is compelling. Now, there are two types. And of course, these two can vary. Like, for example, the author can have a really high concept book and then slowly develop their style into something really awesome. A good, really good example of that is this series, Percy Jackson Olympians, Heroes of Olympus. He's Rick, R Rick Riordan got a really, really, really good concept of demigods in, in modern age. And then he, and then with his plot devices and writing ways, he managed to make this enormous amount of books. Uh, another another example of that will be warriors because uh, the first concept of the cats talking and having these different tribes and culture was pretty cool. But recently, recently, as I've stated in the review of this book, Starless Kind Number One River, Aaron Hunter is has gained so much amassed so much experience at the point where she can develop this seemingly not so special, not so high concept story within the context of her series that is still extremely compelling because she has developed her style and her way of writing. In this case, this one I would say is high concept, that it, it applies to number one, no variation yet. Or I might be just super, super unaware, and this might be either not the first high concept book she's written, or maybe she's just a genius at writing high concept book, who knows, but at but from what I see, from what I've read, which is, which to be admitted, is only a third of the book, it's a high concept book with really cool themes and really cool devices that are kind of spammed in there that where I, I don't appreciate how that's written. Because it doesn't take a huge lot of skill to do that. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't a skillfully well-written book or it doesn't take effort to write something like this because it takes a lot of effort. This might have taken years to write. Like, it takes a lot of, a lot of, a lot of effort to write a book. Obviously, and if, if it's a high concept, really beautiful book like this, it obviously took a lot of effort and a lot of time. And obviously, that I'm not trying to say, oh, she's it's all just one concept, and then she, she just wrote it because that's not how writing works. But what I was trying to kind of point at is writing in a not a super high concept, but like a mid concept, like a decent concept book, while and while trying to make that special with your with your style and with your writing is a little bit more difficult than than writing writing a book where it's extremely high concept where nobody has ever heard of that concept before and making it compelling because that's not your story being compelling necessarily it's the concept that your story is based on which is refreshing that is compelling and this is similar in the way where sword art online let's go to anime Sword Art Online is an extremely, extremely, it's a, it's a mid show. It's pretty mid. And right now, and at this point, it's being pretty critiqued for its, its pretty bad plot points and the way it is written. Of course, a lot of the story recently has improved. However, Sword Art Online, back then, the first couple, first little bit and the middle little bit, and then not that good. But back then, it was like, oh my god, Sword Art Online, the most awesome anime in the world. Everyone loved it. Why? Because it was high concept. It was extremely good concept at that point. Of course, I'm not saying, again, that this is high concept and low quality writing, because that's simply not true. I'm simply saying that sometimes it's easier to write a high concept book 
than something that is mid or low concept and try to make it compelling. That's my first point. So what I, the conclusion from that is just because it's compelling doesn't mean it's a good book in my standards. Now, this is where elements that I really, really don't like in a book come in, right? So there's a couple elements. First of all, the main character is powerless and has no power to fight against or do something against the main antagonist or the main problem of the story. That's my first thing. And uh, you guys must be saying, oh my god, uh, Aaron, you don't you don't like stories where there's conflict? Is that what you're saying? Do you not like stories where it's a little bit scary, you little child? No, that's not what I'm saying. Because I absolutely love dark, horrifying tales and thrillers. It's just this book gives you a sense of powerlessness. Because, you see, the main character is put into space on a spaceship where no one else exists except these mutated human alien things that wants to implant a chip in her head to make her a robotic teaching machine and erase her conscious mind and there's no no way she can fight against them she's been in sleep paralysis what is essentially sleep paralysis for the past couple hundred years and she's stuck in a spaceship nowhere to run nowhere to hide and no way to fight against them that's freaking terrifying and although some might love that concept and might be super super into it i am not i really don't like when that happens because to me that just feels like like lazy writing it's like the characters in a position where they can't do anything so they'll have to find some some innovative way to do something and and i really don't like that kind of thing no i mean like i love when characters need to find innovative ways to solve a problem i just hate it when characters are in this really super super vulnerable position now that's fine if that's the only thing but then there's other things like the science fiction element of it. I really don't like it when in science fiction stuff, they like put something or mess with your brain. Because for me, my brain is like one of the most important things. Of course, obviously for me, because a lot of how I operate is based on my thoughts. I think quickly, question mark. I think a lot, I think is a better way to say it. I think a lot, I think a lot. I think of all the world and everything that I can do for everything, literally anything in my life. So if someone freaking put plugs information into my brain or, or characters being doing that forcefully, I really, really don't like that. Because personally for me, if someone's meddles with my brain, then it's like someone is meddling with my entire life. And that's why I really don't like something like that. And of course, if, if it was just that one element, then it would have been fine, but it has, it has another one. And then another one, another element that I really dislike is when a character is in a super duper vulnerable position and where they're like, you know, being a spy or something and they have the risk of getting caught and they have no way of escape. That's the main part. You know, if a spy movie, the spy gets caught, you know, the spy can you know, pull out and kill everyone in the room and get out or just like have an escape route or, or get caught but get rescued. But in this case, there are no alternatives to what could happen to the story. There's just a ship with a bunch of aliens, well, humans, mutated humans, who, who really don't like you, and there's you, powerless little girl, tiny little girl, who's been in sleep paralysis for the past couple decades. And this brings us to my, to my next one, which is sleep paralysis. Being in a tube, in a water tube, for a couple hundred years, and your mind, they forgot to freaking put the right thing to put off your mind and listen to whatever lessons, and there's a thing called lessons while you're sleeping away in a stasis. <sighs> Holy crap, I hate that, dude. Imagine if freaking Captain Merrick was stuck in the ice for a hundred years and his mind was awake for every second of it. What well, if you get hit by a car and you're freaking like, like alive and your mind is awake but you have to see, you hear, and ever feel everything, but you, you can't just, oh, you can't open your eyes. And the doctor outside is going, oh, his brain is dead, we're gonna have to, you know, kill him off. And uh, you're just like, no, I'm freaking alive, what the heck? That's what happens. And I really don't like that kind of thing. So, in, so but, you know, I'm, I'm fine with one of those things. Like, you know, a lot of really, really good dystopian books, like uh, Hunger Games or 
uh, Divergent Trilogy or the Maze Runner Trilogy or even 1984 has maybe one or two of these elements, but it's got a, a different compelling story. You know what I mean? Because I not not only that, but it's just one or two, you know, I can deal with that, you know, I can deal with that, I can I can kind of okay. Like I don't like it, but I'll go through it. And this one, it just has all of them. Every single one of them. You know when you have a burger and there's like let's say there's like garlic and tomato and, and, and meat. And if there's only like let's say let's say for instance, although I don't, I hate tomatoes and garlic, right? If if my hamburger has has the bun and the slab of meat and the garlic, then I could probably deal with it because you know it's just it's just one thing. It's just one thing. I don't I, I can take care of it. But if there's garlic and tomatoes, then we got a problem. Same thing with this book. We've got every single element that I really, really don't like in a book. And I'm not really super impressed with the book itself because it's a really high concept. It's a really good concept. And whoever thought of this, genius, good job. But it's that's the only thing that I feel from the story. It's just this it's just that one concept. That's the entire that's what the entire story is based on. It's one concept with these with these one concept and these horrific elements that I really don't like in a book mashed together into one book which got the Newbery Medal. I that's why I, I really couldn't go through the rest of this without, you know, peeing my pants and getting nightmares for the rest of the week and like being sane, you know, that's important. And uh final thing, again, disclaimer for who are huge fans of the book. I absolutely agree with you. It's a really good book, really good concept, pretty good writing, pretty good pacing. In other words, it's a it's a pretty really solid book, really really good book, very very deserving of the Newbery Medal. If I was the guy who was grading Newbery Medals or choosing Newbery Medals, I would absolutely vote for this book. It's just that I would hate every single fiber of it. And again, you got to remember books are personal preference. Like I might like Harry Potter and you might not. Does that mean you're right and I'm or you're right and I'm wrong or I'm right and you're wrong? Probably not. So it's the same thing for this book. I really, really dislike everything that makes up makes this up. And although the cultural elements were really cool and the concept was interesting, it just wasn't enough to compel me to torture myself through anxiety and depression until the inevitable ending where the main character does something cool and does some plot armor BS and becomes and takes over the ship or something. Because the thing is, in that kind of really bad, bad, bad situation where she's the only one there with mutated humans who can kill her any second um, and she's powerless and the only thing she has in her brain is stories, how the hell did she get out of that situation? I know she is gonna, because ain't no way this book isn't a happy ending, because I can sense it. There's gonna be some plot armor BS going on over here. And I know the plot's just gonna revolve around her to make her conveniently do something that, that like, makes the people understand or sets people free or, or something like that. I, I don't know, I'm just making assumptions at this point, which is unfair of me. But that's what I feel like is gonna happen, which again is not. It's it's not really. That's not. I don't really appreciate that because that means that this that you're bending the plot in order to fit the the character's needs, which is also known as your writing is mid. So that that's that's my prediction for the rest of my book. I might be completely wrong. You can roast me in the comments. But again, good book, good concept, absolutely deserving of the awards. Just I don't like it. That's, that's all there is to it. And like always, your plot quester and the plot quester. Holy crap, I have not talked so much about a book negatively after Romeo and Juliet and Macbeth. It's what it is what it is, yeah? Have a great day.